Hey everybody, hope you're having a good week this week. I was just calling in to check in with you guys and um, also to uh, share some things with you. I hope that everything's going well. Um, going to talk a little bit about some things in the Bible and uh, hopefully we can grow and learn from those things. So let's pray. Father, I give you praise. I give you thanks for being an awesome God, for being a holy, a mighty, and wonderful God. I thank you, Father, for being over us that, Lord, no matter what's happening in our world, that, Lord, you are over us, you are in control. And that, Father, we don't have to worry about anything knowing that you are taking care of it. So, Father, I thank you for that. I praise you for that. I ask, Lord, that you would be with us as we learn more about you today. We thank you and love you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, I um, hope everybody's having a good week. Uh, it's definitely, uh, God is definitely good. A lot of interesting things have been happening to me, a lot of confusing things have been happening in my life, so I wanted to focus a little bit on that. Um, I find, and this is where I want to start off today, that it's very easy. It's a lot easier for me, I guess I should say. When God tells me to do something, it's very, it, it becomes easy. Uh, years ago, a few years back, the Lord told me to move to Louisiana. And you think it's a very difficult task. I was talking with somebody about it this week, about how um, how difficult it was. At the beginning, when, you, when you know, you're praying, and you're asking the Lord, what next? What's coming up? Because you know, the Lord knows. That's the cool part, the, is that the Lord knows. But the, the difficult part is that we don't know. We have no clue what's coming up. Uh, and when the Lord told me to go to Louisiana, it began to become much easier as the process started. I knew he wanted me to do it. I knew I needed to be obedient to him. I knew if I trusted him 100%, he would take care of me. I knew that he would watch over me. And I knew that things were going to be good. And they did. They turned out great. There were some ups and downs, but there's ups and downs in life every day. And I always tell people, would you rather go through the ups and downs by yourself? Or would you rather go through the ups and downs with Jesus? Um, so yeah, I mean, that, that, that was a difficult but pretty awesome adventure. And I'm glad that I did it. I've told, a few, I've told a, you a few times when we were talking on this that uh, I, I'm glad because I got to spend a lot of time with my Thunder brother. Got to spend a lot of time with Ronnie before he passed away. And uh, we got to spend a lot of time doing ministry together. I grew and I learned a lot from him. And I'm very grateful for that. I was grateful for the time that I had. And I wouldn't have had that time if the Lord hadn't moved me. So uh, when the Lord tells me to do something, it's very, very, becomes very easy. The one thing that isn't easy and it's hard for me is when the Lord doesn't tell me what's going to happen and as you study the Bible you see that happening in people's lives you, you see that uh, that you know Peter for example was going to walk on water how did he know he was going to walk on the water Jesus said come out to him and he went out on faith and he stepped out and he could have just sank. You know, there's many times in the Bible where the Israelites are going through something, when somebody that God calls is going through something. And as they're going through something, God, they don't know what's going to happen next. And that's the scary part. We know, we know the end of the story. You know, the, the, the demons didn't know that when they crucified Jesus that he was going to rise again and that he was going to defeat death in the grave. And they thought they had won. There are many times in the Bible where there's a battle in front of us, there's something going on with the people that are facing it, and they don't know what's happening. We can just turn to the end of the book and say, wow, look, they won. The Lord is in control. But there are times in, in my life, and I think these are the hardest times for me, and I don't know about you, and I'm, a, you know, I'm sure that they're difficult when they come across your way, is not when the Lord tells me to do something. Because when he tells me to do something, then I know that at the end of it there's going to be something great and something amazing. 
And he told me to be a youth pastor many years ago or to be a youth leader many years ago. And I was scared to death. And I was, I was really scared about really messing up teenagers. That's what I was scared about. And the Lord wanted me to do it. So I did it. And it was some of the great years of my life. So, But he told me to do it. But when we're in these sections where we know God knows the future. And I don't need to go to no Swami or witch or... I mean, there's a lot of witchcraft around here. You go on Facebook Marketplace, there's tons of witch stuff for sale. People are into witchcraft. It's it's a culture around here almost in the South, um, people being involved in witchcraft. And, and, you know, a lot of those people want to know the future, so they go to these uh, tarot card readers or, you know, but the thing is God knows the future. They don't know the future. They don't know what's going to happen, but God does. The only problem is, is that sometimes he doesn't share it with us. And that's where... I'm at right now. So I can tell you that the most, I don't know if it's scariest times or uh, the most hardest times for me, the times where I wrestle the most, which I've been wrestling a lot over the past, uh, at least past couple months now, I've been wrestling quite a bit, is that it's when I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen next. I can't turn to that part of the Bible where I get the victory. I know that we already have the victory. I was teaching on that in Colossians. You know, we think that we're fighting sometimes. In Colossians it says, we think that we're fighting to get the victory when we already have the victory in Jesus. So as we're fighting and we're, you know, we're fighting from victory. And that's really important for anyone to understand. We're already victorious. But right now, as of right now, I'm going through this really, like, I have no clue what's going to happen right now. I'm in that moment again where everything's up in the air. You know, all these things are happening that I have no clue what to do. And I'm just trying to be obedient in the midst of them, trying to trust in the midst of them. You know, and, and the good part is, is that my life verse, the, the verse the Lord gave me when I moved to Louisiana, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So I'm just praying. I'm like Peter, I'm stepping out of the boat and I'm just praying, but I have no clue what's coming next and it's irking me. <laughs> I'm wrestling with it. I wrestle with it. You know, and, and I, I find, and the Lord shows me these things. Like, you know, like I said, it's so easy when he tells me, do this. And I'm like, I don't want to do it. But then I do it, and then it's so great afterwards. But when it's these times where you're just like, Lord, what do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? You know, what is your plan? You know, Lord, give me some answers, some confirmation, some things. And, and it's quiet. David were, was in those times. You know, how long will you forget about me, Lord? He's like in the Psalms. Uh, how long will you forget about me? How long, Lord? You know, though the Lord doesn't forget about us. Hebrews 13.5 says he's always with us. But he just doesn't give us the answers. And it's like, Lord, what am I supposed to do? It's a big question mark. Big question mark over our lives. The cool part about God, and, and um, it's interesting, uh, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, a really great scripture. Uh, if you've never read it, I'm going to read it to you now. For I know the plans I have for you. So Lord, the Lord already has plans for me. I don't know what they are. Um, surrendering to him on a daily basis, I'm praying. I realize that he's in control of my life. For I know the plans I have for you, is what he's saying there. Declares the Lord. He declares it. Plans for good and not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. So even though I don't know what's going to happen, even though I don't know what's going on, I can realize here, and this is really important, and there's some really good words in this, for I know the plans that I have for you. God has a plan. 
for our lives. And he declares it, it says in the, in the verse here. He's declaring it. I have a plan personally for you. And it's plans for good. You're my kid. I love you. You're my son. You're my daughter. And the plans that I have for you are good plans. You may not think they're good, but I do. And once you get into the plan, you're going to realize that it's good. Plans for good and not for bad. Not for evil. To give you a future. To give you hope. You know, this week, um, as I was teaching with Pastor Shaw, uh, one of the things he said really impacted me. You know, Pastor Shaw's turning into an awesome pastor. He's turning into a great pastor. One of the things that uh, he said was, and this is, this is the thing that impacted me, you know, you don't know what your life will be like tomorrow. You know, but a year from now, you won't even remember it. You know, we may be going through, like right now I'm going through this time where I'm just like, everything's up in the air. I have no clue what's going to happen. And I'm sitting there in the palm of God's hand right now, my heart being held by him. The Bible says every breath that I take, the Lord causes me to breathe. Every heartbeat, the Lord causes my heart to beat. God is in control, moving our heart to the left and to the right. He stirs the hearts of men to control what he desires to do and what he wants to do. And he, every time I've had to have a situation where I didn't know what was coming next, I could see moving forward what he was doing. So I know that there's a plan. I know there's something that God wants me to do. I know there's something that he's planning for the future, but I don't know what it is at this time. And that's the crazy part for me. That's the part that I wrestle with. Yeah. I wrestle with it, and then sooner or later he's going to give me the answer. I know that, and I have faith and I have confidence in that, and, and I have faith and confidence that it's going to be something good. Because God is good. James chapter 4, verse 14 says, You don't know what your life will be like tomorrow. I have no clue what's going to happen tomorrow. I have no clue what's going to happen next week or next year. You're just a vapor, the Bible says. That this life is split second. I can't believe how fast it goes. I can't believe how fast my life went. I, I was, went 0 to 50 in like 4 seconds. That's an actual thing because I'm 50 years old. And it seems like life is just going by so quickly. And then it, it says that it's just a vapor. It's like if you were to boil something, that, that's, that steam that's coming off, it just disappears. That's how fast your life is. That's how quick, not even quicker than this snap of my fingers compared to an eternity. And I know where my eternity is going to be. And I don't know what's going to happen. And I'm wrestling, and I wrestle with that, and I pray about it, and I don't know what the, what's going to take place. But I know who holds my future. I know who holds my heart. I know who causes me to breathe. I know that one day when I stop, this thing stops, that my soul and my, lo my spirit that's made alive in Christ in Romans 8.11 says it's going to go to be with the Lord. I'm going to be with the Lord. It's awesome. His spirit will raise me from the dead one day. So yeah, I'm, I, I struggle with this. I do. I like any person. Oh, pastors don't struggle. Yes, we do. Oh, well, you know, you're above us and we don't know. No, I'm a son of the living God above all else. David was awesome because David uh, was a king. He was a warrior. He was a psalmist. And at the end of his life, if you read, read in the Bible, it says at the end of his life, he just says, you know, he doesn't say he's a king. He doesn't say he's a great warrior, a great leader. He says that he's just simply the Lord's, he's the Lord's psalmist, the Lord's singer. You know, when he passes away. John, 
the apostle, he always refers to himself as the one that Jesus loves. That's what he says. I'm the one that Jesus loves. He loves me. You know, that, the simplicity of that is beautiful. So when we are in these times, question mark. I have no clue what's going to happen next. I don't know what's going to, what I'm going to do. I don't know what's going to happen. But I do know this, no matter what happens, I'm going to put my faith in Jesus. I'm going to trust in Jesus. I'm going to remember that he is supreme over everything. And I'm going to move forward. And as I move forward, the Lord will provide. As I move forward, the Lord will direct. As I move forward, the Lord will take care. And all those things, I don't have to worry. I don't have to be afraid. I shouldn't wrestle, though I'm wrestling, and, you know, I need to be praying and continuing to pray because, but, but most importantly, we have to remember God has a plan. And we don't have to go to any horrible scope in the newspaper or any swami or tarot card reader or um, Wiccan or any of those people to know what the future is going to hold for us. It's just not going to... We don't need that. We just need Jesus. There was a Scientology convention in Philadelphia that I prayed about and the Lord sent me to and I got to share Christ with a lot of the people that were there. And uh, one of the elders, as I was leaving, told me, he said, you can't leave. And I'm like, why can't I leave? I can do whatever I want. Well, why would you want to leave in the middle of this great Scientology event? Um, and I said, well, sir, I'm not a Scientologist. I'm a Christian. And he's like, oh, we have so many Christians who are Scientologists. They're both Scientologists and Christians. You can mix and you can do that. And I'm like, let me tell you a story. And I told him the story of Peter walking on the water and it's important to understand when Jesus when Peter focused on Jesus he walked on the water if you read in that verse specifically he's looking at Jesus and he's doing the impossible he's looking at Jesus and he's walking on the water his focus is only on Jesus and then it says in the word there when he starts to turn and look at the storms he looks around him at all the storms and all the trouble. He begins to sink. And then it also says he immediately cries out to Jesus. And Jesus grabs out his hand and pulls him out of the water. We need to be looking at Jesus. There's a beautiful song. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. It's true. It is. It's true. All eyes on Jesus. What's he going to do next? What's he going to do with me next? what he's going to do with you next. But let's read that verse. It says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for good, not for evil. To give you a future and to give you hope. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for our bright futures. That when we follow you and surrender to you, Father, Lord, there is hope. So, Lord, I thank you for that and praise you for that. I pray for those who are going through whatever they're going through right now, Lord. Help them to remember that we have hope, that we have a future. And, Father, in that, I thank you and I give you praise. That even when we can't see the end of the story, Lord, we have the victory. Because we fight from victory. We battle from victory. So, Lord, I know I have the victory today. Victory in you. In Jesus' name. Amen.
God bless you guys. I hope you have a fantastic week. Thank you for listening.